Greetings dear viewer, welcome to another old school Shen gameplay commentary. Now, the weather is fantastic. It has been snowing here in Finland and we are appreciating the winter, right? And what we will be doing is playing one of the classic Shen matchups, Shen into tracks. Uh, yeah, he was a faster, it's, it's completely fine. Now, I could probably, if I had a little bit better reaction time, I could probably E him and we might get a kill. He might be able to flash it since he stuns everyone who's close. But hey, a flash is a flash. And we have E start, which is not even bad into Jax when you actually think about it. Because what happens on level 1 in Shen into Jax is if you go for um, a trade with your Q, most likely what will happen is he's, he will just E and you can't get off any auto attacks and you will may, uh, take damage. So E start into Jax is not bad at all, so I don't actually lose anything here. Now, I hope Rex I can clear by himself because I want to drag the minions upwards towards uh, the bush here in order to make my minions focus one minion faster. So if Jax is leashing for leasing and he's already a little bit late, then what might happen is he might miss the experience of one minion. So that's why I pull them up like this. And then what will happen is, any, uh, I said it wrongly, but en enemy minions will focus one minion faster. So this minion was focused faster. And look. E start here is fine, because I can pull him back like this, and then nothing happens in the trade. One thing you have to keep in mind um, in the Jax matchup is that the fact that um, your E cooldown is slightly longer than Jax's cooldown. Uh, Jax's E cooldown, I mean. And this is very important, because he's gonna jump on you with E, and you want to be able to E it every time. So you have to realize when your E is like two seconds of cooldown, you uh, are actually in danger because he could just E and stun you at that point and then you're gonna take a lot of damage, right? So we're just gonna stay in lane, but the way we can counteract this, I don't know, like I might actually try it, but either you can go for ability haste or then you can put um, one point into E, like one, one more point into E than you would normally. Now I'm, I might actually try this this game because it, it seems like a fun little technology. Just like matching the cooldowns by putting extra point into E in order to prevent uh, this window of opportunity that he's ha that he has. And this is just an uh, like kind of example of like skill expressive skill order because you don't want to get fixed. Like on most champions, like 99% of the games, right? You can go for the same skill order. But on Shane, for example, like. Sometimes you start E and sometimes you start, start Q. Then this is just decided on uh, whether you invade usually. But maybe in some matchups you would even start E even if you're not invading, if you know you lose the 1v1. So then, um, we trade auto attacks there. I could probably um, double the auto attack. Notice, do you notice my small movement here? Uh, you might not even notice it uh, if you're just, uh, let's say, you haven't played the game for 8 years. You might not notice what I'm doing. But the reason why I move like this in front of the red minion is because I don't want the red minion to path into my tower where it would die. So this allows me to get the last hit on the minion by using my body to block it. This is really good because he wasted his E and we're gonna ward there. And we can actually kill him here because he does not have his um, flash right from the early invade. Looks like Kassadin will die in the mid lane. Uh, we will just have to like shove this in that's all we can do he's running a ghost so he does not have tp to return into lane and once we have this wave shoved in then i can get back to my runes because there's something important that i have in this game which will actually signal uh the build that i'm going for as well okay that's perfect then we go here and we haven't even used a refillable potion so we can uh, our health potion rather so we can actually sell it we could go for tubbies we could go for Tabis. I'm gonna go for Bami Cinder. Uh, and then control war. And then we're gonna sell this. Ooh, it's not enough. Uh, undo, whatever, go back to lane. Okay, we're fine with this. Control war is more important than refillable potion in my mind because uh, being able to establish vision this early on when we have lane dominance is gonna be good. Now for our runes, right? We're running standard resolve tree except we went for tenacity because uh, of Jax's stun, uh, leasing E slow, Akali slow, uh, Ash slow, Nami slow, also Ash CC, Nami bubble, all this stuff. So I went for unflinching because I do not want to build Merc Threads into a Jax matchup, right? Because that's a waste of gold. And I'm not building any other item that can give me 
uh, tenacity. So just going unflinching here allows me to do a lot more stuff because uh, you kind of need tenacity in a game like this. I'm gonna W there and look when he E's, then we E backwards to pull him back and then we can go for one more auto attack if he decides to last with this. Look, look at how much damage he's taken by the way and then we can safely trade like this and now we let the wave push into us and now we can talk about the builds. So season 13 Shen we have many build paths available to us, but we have one kind of cookie cutter uh, instance uh, or a template that we can use, which is you go for um, boots and bummy cinder. So these boots, most of the time, I would prefer Ionian boots of lucidity because I really like the ability haste that we are getting. I'm actually going to mute Janus pings because they're getting quite annoying and I want to be able to focus on my own lane instead of his constant pings. Um, so yeah, Bummy Cinder into Ionian Boots of Lucidity or Steel Caps if you require them. I rarely go for Merc Threads nowadays because I feel like it's much better value to just go for Unflinching instead of Merc Threads. I can get back to that later because I have a very kind of trade-off based method for thinking about why I should go for Unflinching instead of... Um... I'm actually gonna contest this warp take here. Okay. Uh, I ping this right, so we get perfect ward timer. This is one of the changes that happened in preseason. If you ping a ward while it is visible, you will get an icon on top of it that shows a perfect ward timer. Notice how I use my W there to block his auto attack, um, or his W attack rather. Now disengage immediately because he can E. He wasted Q, so we can walk back in. We can actually Nimbus Cloak here for movement speed to threaten him more. And he has to waste ultimate for that. Right, that's really good. Now look at the wave state still. We're getting subbed in. Now I could ult bot lane, but it would be a disaster because it would actually ruin my lane, right? Because there's a huge huge wave pushing and I, I have checkmate on this guy if he um, stays in the lane. Okay, that's fine. He wastes both summoners. Uh, I'm not gonna flash there, even though with Nimbus Cloak I could maybe catch up to him for the last auto attack. But it's like 50% chance in my head, because I wasn't, if I had to do it instantly. Uh, like the moment he flashed I had to do that, because he has Ghost ramping at movement speed, right? I did not do that and I'm completely fine with this exchange as well. Because now I keep my flash and I still force him out of the lane. So in some sense, like forcing a player out of the lane is almost equal to getting a gold uh, kill on him. Obviously I'm not getting the golden experience, but what you are getting is the denial of golden experience because the opposing player is not in the lane. And you also have more time to yourself to just farm. Uh, we're gonna set up a slow push now towards the opponent, and what that enables us to do is it enables us to recall. And then we can talk about the build probably, because I actually want to try Riftmaker Shen again. Now Riftmaker Shen was something I went for uh, very early on, was it like last season? I think it was last season. And it was with the not nerfed, unnerfed Titanic Hydra. Because you could build this Titanic Hydra first item because it scaled from max HP and not bonus HP like it does now. So it was much better in the early game. And if you look at our gold amount, we're actually gonna do that right now. And we're gonna purchase Leeching Lear first, okay? But we will not instantly upgrade it into um, Riftmaker. Because if you compare these items, okay, this gives us 5% Omnimap, 250 health and 20 ability power. Now Riftmaker gives us 50 more health, 2% more Omnivamp and some ability haste, alright? And that, that's like, those are good stats and then it gives, yeah, ability power, like I said. Um, but what it does not do is it doesn't give us um, that much damage from the uh, passive which is like one of the main reasons why you buy Riftmaker in, in the first place. Now we have to look at... Oh, actually, wait, Raven just ran in. Now, maybe I could have already ulted there, but like, I'm not gonna ult now that uh, Raven is not alive. Uh, that's fine. We're, we're just gonna play the 1v1 for now. Anyways, I'm not running Ultimate Hunter, so I don't have this... <laughs> wait, Raven is also being... Wait, just... <laughs> Guys, okay, relax. I mean, I know the new ping system is cool and all, but you don't need to spam it all the time. I think this new, uh, like, what is it, um, bait ping will be used in a more <laughs> toxic sense as well for some reason. Not gonna get it that far. I'm gonna ult here just to get the shield onto Kassadin. This, this is so fine for me. Look, we get an assist as well and we save Kassadin. We can actually go under tower here for a trade. We already take one tower shot there and we can go for another... Ooh. Ooh, very nice crash block there. He, he's, he's very close to dying. I have Ignite, right? And he has no summoner spells. 
remember? Because we punished him early on, uh, or in the last fight. So, we can actually just prepare our Q here, and then what we do is we bait his E. Maybe. He doesn't E. Okay. Now he is. Now we back off. But now his E is gonna be back at the same time that our E is gonna be back. We took quite a lot of damage there. But one thing we have going for us is we have Omnivamp <laughs> from Leeching Lair. This component is quite nice. It gives us some sustain, which Sen does not innately have. He does not win this, by the way. <laughs> he, he does not win that. And we know that a Lee Sin's bot sign on Akali is dead. So there is no threat for me. Right. And I'm very confident that I can beat him in a 1v1 if I just don't get stunned un under tower. So that's why I'm always eing away from tower, because I feel like that is the only time that I can lose the 1v1. Uh, we could go for one tower plating and then recall. So we're just gonna hit this a couple of times, and then we're gonna recall here where the minions are gonna act as a body block. right? And since he doesn't have TP, we can just do this safely. So the minions are just gonna block the attacks, and I'm gonna be fine. And then I'm gonna go for Lucidity Boots here, and we're gonna purchase one Cloth Armor and a Control Mark. Alright, and now some people could call these builds um, a Living on a Prayer uh, build. And uh, why is that? Because if you take a look at our items, we are only halfway there. <coughs> Uh, yes, I know, I know. Comedy genius, comedy genius. Uh, anyways, we're gonna be finishing our Sunfire before we complete our Rift Maker. Okay, he's gonna use Warp for that. I'm completely happy with that. Oh, oh, I got the Warp Timer. Nice. He's gonna have E up now, so we don't uh, follow the trade any further. Bot lane is fine. Cassadin is quite ahead, but the bot lane is like... Not that strong, but we don't mind that like, it's okay. We're gonna use W just to mitigate some minion damage here. Now, when we use W, he's also more proactively gonna look for trades. Uh, and he's quite well, like, disengaging after we um, taunt him backwards, because that's the opportunity where we can actually get, like, damage off. So, again, we're just gonna use W here to keep the wave frozen, and then we're gonna get the shield. And then we're gonna chill. Bummy Cinder is obviously gonna be doing some damage to the minions, so I can just permanently freeze this. But we can minimize the damage that the Bummy Cinder does by moving outside of the range and then just moving inside the range when we want to last it. And this is actually something that I think is very important on Shen, and I see a lot of players struggling it with is when they purchase Bummy Cinder or any immolate item in general. Well, now there's all the fusions, Bummy Cinder only upgrades into Sulfur Ages, is they just sit in the wave. And then they complain like, why am I, why am I, like, m missing so many minions? To walk outside the stun, he's gonna have the ward over there so he can jump to it again. But he wastes ultimate, and we're gonna last hit this. And we look at mid lane. A play is possible here. We have W block. This is fine. This is my jump to try to kill the castle. Notice how I uh, walk to dodge the Shen uh, Elysian Q at point blank range right here. Because if he hits the Q, I'm actually dead there. So then we do enough damage, we play ar around, because our Ignite was coming up in a couple of seconds, so we play around that. And then we, when we get Ignite, we can uh, calculate the damage so that Elysian will die to the Ignite and minimize the uh, time that we are in Ashes DPS range. And then using Nimbus Cloak movement speed, we can escape that situation. And now we have finished our Bummy Cinder and our Leeching Lear. And what we're basically doing is we are engaging in Mordekaiser Simulator 2022. And we have lots of AoE damage and lots of healing. So <laughs> now that we have uh, Shen Mordekaiser Simulator and also Ultimate coming up in one minute, we're just gonna be trying to split push top side because we are much stronger than the Jacks. And if we can deny farm from Jacks, we are gonna be in a good position to win this game because we have a late game condition in Kassadin. And once Rod of Ages triggers for Kassadin, he's gonna be really close to getting level 16. And a level 16 Kassadin with a Shen shield on top 
that's gonna be a nightmare for the opponents to deal with. But before that, let's not get ahead of ourselves and let's keep playing the lane in the best way possible. He still has E, right? So I can't auto attack him now because uh, I don't have my E and I don't want to get stunned uh, under tower. But we can hit the minion like this. And this is actually a good opportunity now. We can punish him with one auto attack and we can punish him with another actually. Uh, very close there, he actually uses his ultimate, he should have his summoners up and Akali is coming here. I'm gonna instantly E, because I want to... Okay, uh, sorry, I need to focus for this fight. Okay, Ayy! Yes, stop watch! Okay, so my mistake in that fight is I did not dodge Akali's E. Akali's E is a huge damage spell, and probably in this fight, let's see how much it did, Shuri can flip 400 magic damage, right? If I was able to sidestep it, which is not that easy, right? It's a pretty fast spell. I would have probably been, I mean, for sure I would have lived. Uh, and there's another option here. Uh, I'm gonna actually... I'm gonna be greed and sell my control bar in order to get blasting ones here. And the other option is when Akali was fighting me here, instead of going for uh, the one for one trade, which I did because I kept auto attacking him because I knew if he keeps auto attacking me, he will die to tower, but I did not calculate the fact that he had a stopwatch available to him. Uh, we could just disengage, which forces Akali to chase us into our tower, which probably would have been the better option. It was a very close 1v1. Um, yeah, small, slight micro errors on my part, which like, I think like I, at this point I should be able to win those kinds of fights because they're like not like impossible fights to win. Yeah, please cancel. Thank you. It's so nice. It's so so nice of you to cancel this, by the way. We can also deny him the cannon here. I can chill, and then we're gonna take. The, we're gonna take the aggro of the minions here, okay? So the minions come to my side, so then we get to have the wave here. I'm gonna take tower aggro. Never mind, Cassidy used Q to take tower aggro. Okay, um, I think... <laughs> yeah, I think it just kills. <laughs> okay, I mean, he can get the experience, it's Cassidy anyways. If we are looking at a way to win the game, we want to give as much experience to Cassidy as possible. Our team was doing a lot of work over there. I wonder if we can get this. We can. Plop. Then we're gonna clear the ward. We're gonna get five gold for the first auto attack. Never mind. Uh, why? Maybe... Custom in pinged it or something? I don't know why we don't get the gold. 1050 is our uh, breakpoint for this maker. This might be dangerous because Nami was tapping topside, so I'm gonna pull the jungle camps a little bit this way. Uh, and once we get this, we can sell our Doran shield to finish our, our rift maker and we're gonna be quite strong. Now what we could do is we could go Anathema's third item um, and put it on Akali. We can actually grab one more wave and retain our Doran shield for the time being. We can put Anathema's on Akali since she is the only real magic damage dealer and we don't need to itemize against Jax because we're just gonna be stronger than him by default in these situations. 35 seconds on ult cooldown. Yeah, I'm gonna reset because Riftmaker is quite a big spike. I'm gonna go for one more control ward and then E back to top lane. Uh, so yeah, Anathema's chains will be the most beneficial item here because if you think about their magic damage now, obviously Nami does some magic damage, but it's not like that noticeable. Takali is going for an assassination, I think. But Draven gets peeled from our team. It's gonna be a free kill. And now we are gonna maybe even E flash onto Jax. Ah, looks like not. And we have to look at our jungler because I have ultimate in one second. That's a big shield. <laughs> right. And Raven. Oh, Rex, I get killed. Uh, we can push bot lane. That will be fine. We'd also try to go for a 1v1 on the Jax. But I think we all know the result of that one. Yes, Blade of the Ruined King, but that's not gonna make any difference since I have my completed Rift Maker and I'm absolute. No, no, it's, not, it's not just Mordekaiser Simulator anymore, it's actually becoming Mordekaiser. 
you either die a hero or see yourself or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. This is what happened here. Kill. This is live. Okay, dragons. Pop stomping them. I <laughs> I went to the tower rage. Oopsie. <laughs> okay, good hustle though. <laughs> So that was Riftmaker Shen. We didn't get to see the full potential, but I think it might be a good build to go when enemies have melee slots. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys.